it's Karen at the Cool Tools Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use some of your texture tiles in a fun new way in this earring project video. For the clay working portion of this project, I'm going to be working with a clay board, and this one's a turntable clay board so it rotates which is super convenient, a medium sanding stick, an ultra clay pick, a scalpel, a clay shaper, a brush, and a hand drill with some drill bits. I'm going to be working with a clay scraper, a wonder roller, a long mega texture tile, and this pattern is interwoven leaves, and some sanding pads. I'm going to be using jewelry template shapes, organic shapes too, some easy 960 clay, both lump and syringe. I'm going to be using an extra work surface, some tough cards, and clay thickness rolling frames. Today we're just using the two cards thickness. I'm going to be working with a hot plate, some cool slip, and the wick away. We're going to start off this project by cutting out some borders to surround the delicate detailing in the middle there. And this piece was made by having a front piece and then this kind of lacy element and then a back piece. So we kind of sandwiched the lacy element with these edges to give it support. And to do that, I ended up cutting for each earring two of this size, this size, and this size. So in total, there were six elements per pair of earrings, so 12 total. And I rolled all my clay for this project to two cards thickness. And before I cut my borders out, I'm going to move my clay onto a tough card. And I like to do that so that my shapes don't distort when I'm moving them. Since I am kind of cutting out these border edges and there's no interior aspect to the shape to kind of keep them in their proper form, having them on the tough card to move them off is really helpful. So I'm gonna start off by cutting my outside edge and I put the rolling frame back just to support my template so I'm not um, going to kind of push it unevenly and push down into my clay or create a gouge. So I'm going to cut this outside edge first and then I'm going to use the smaller size right next to it to cut the inside shape there. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle. These are organic shapes. I do want to make sure that I'm kind of leaving myself enough room on both sides to drill a hole. So there's one. And I've got, don't quite have enough room to do the second of the largest. So I'll just do the second largest for this project. Oops. And do I have room for the, yep. So I'm gonna cut all three of the first set. So now I'm going to remove my excess clay. And now I can just take this tough card and put it on my metal clay hot plate and not have to worry about these shapes distorting as I move them to dry. So I've gone ahead and made all of the elements that I'm going to need for this project. Again, there are two of each size for one pair of earrings, so in total I have 12 elements. While you're making these elements and waiting for them to dry, you can make the lacy part that goes in the middle of them. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So again, I'm working with this interwoven leaves texture today. And I picked this out because there's a bunch of points of connection. Um, 
with some of the textures that we have, they're just kind of floating elements that don't connect to anything. And that really wouldn't work for this project. You need to have a texture that has elements that are all linked together. So this texture is perfect for this project. So I'm gonna be using this texture tile, kind of how I use our delicate elements and our finishing touches molds, where I'm gonna be using the scraper tool and pushing clay down into the low areas and then scraping off the top surface. So I'm starting with some clay and I'm pushing it down in and really applying a good amount of downward pressure right now. Add a little more clay. And this turntable work surface is so helpful for things like this. I'm not having to pause and kind of pick up and resituate my mat. So I'm also kind of scraping off as I go. And you can already kind of see what I was talking about, how all the lines are linked up. There isn't any floating things that aren't connected to one another. So I'm just going to make myself a good amount to work with so I can kind of shop around within the pattern and find the areas that I like best that I want to highlight in my earrings. And I think that should be good. So I'm going to take this off to dry and I'm going to be drying it with heat because Easy 960 is more flexible when dried with heat and that's going to make it easier for it to come out of this texture tile without breaking. While that lacy center aspect of my earrings is drying, we're going to talk about sanding the inside edge here. And I'm not going to be worrying about sanding my outside edge yet because when I laminate these two pieces together with the lacy element in the middle, I'm going to be adding paste and filling it in from the edge and then I'll refine that outside edge. But before I put the lacy element in, it's a lot easier to clean up this edge now. So I just have an ultra fine sanding pad that I'm supporting my piece on this, the edge that I'm applying the pressure to, you know, I'm not floating it. And I'm just gonna run the sanding pad along that edge to clean it up. And since there weren't any big gouges or anything, I didn't need to start with fine or super fine or anything. I'm just gonna use the ultra fine to kind of round out that edge and make it look really nice and smooth. I'm gonna repeat that on my other piece. And then these guys will be ready to go for assembly. So I've had this on the hot plate and I know that it's ready to come out because it's kind of already naturally lifting from the edges here. If I pick it up, you can see it kind of pulling away. So I like to remove from my texture tiles by putting it down and then I'll rotate this so you guys can see kind of just fold it back on itself and pushing down to kind of peel away. I think it's all just about all there. There we go. So now I have this really intricate looking pattern that looks like I kind of sat there forever and cut out all these shapes when really I just pushed it through that texture tile. So I think it looks great and I'm now ready to kind of plan what I want to be in the center of my elements here. So I'm going to gently slide this off and then I'm going to be doing this over a tough card because I am going to be cutting and I don't want to scratch up my nice surface I'm going to be rolling clay on later. So I like to just kind of pick up my elements and place them and see what I think looks nice. It kind of has these floral focal points that you could focus on if you wanted. Um, I kind of actually thought the areas where the patterns kind of meeting and going off in different directions looked really dynamic and active. So I kind of liked to select areas like that. So there's one. This will look good for the other. And then kind of like that for that one. 
So before I join, I actually found that it was kind of easy to do some preliminary kind of trimming and selecting of the areas that you're going to be working with. So I just have a scalpel and I'm just applying some kind of downward pressure to kind of trim off the excess to make things a little more workable. So I'm going to cut out this guy in the middle here. So I'm going to kind of scoot the rest of it off and figure that out later and just focus on this one with you guys. So I like to attach these by taking my element off and applying the water to the element. Got a wick away here and a brush. It's going to dampen my brush and I don't want it to be too wet. Just enough moisture to kind of dampen the surface so it'll join. And again, I kind of consider this connection just kind of tacking it until we're coming in later to really kind of reestablish and make that connection nice and strong. So I think around there is where I liked it. I'm just going to apply some gentle downward pressure. If you do get this element too wet and then push down, um, you'll actually kind of end up impressing your clay and it won't have the nice kind of flat, even surface that it does. So you don't want it too wet. So then at this point, now that it's kind of tacked in place, I'm going to slide it off here. Flip. It's another reason it's really nice to work on those tough cards. And then I'm going to come back with some more water. And I'm just kind of dabbing it on. And now I'm ready to take this off to dry before adding the other face. So I went ahead and repeated that process for the two other elements on this earring. And now that it's dry, I'm going to trim off the excess edge here. And I'm just doing that now because I think it makes it a little bit easier to line up this border piece with the back border piece. And you can kind of see without having to peek through the holes. So again, I'm just kind of going along with my scalpel and applying some downward pressure. And it doesn't have to be perfect at this point because we will be filling with paste and sanding up that edge anyways. And again, I'm doing this on a tough card, so I'm not scratching up my nice work surface. All right. So then I'm going to flip this over, grab the other element that's the same size, and I like to kind of pick it up and rotate, just try to see where things line up best. I think that's the winner. So now I'm flipping it back down, taking this element, flipping it to apply water to the back side. Flipping it again. and applying it to my piece. Again, I'm just kind of applying some gentle pressure. Just kind of going along and pinching gently. All right, so again, I'm gonna let this dry. That way it's nice and stable before I start adding some paste. So now I'm ready to kind of start filling and refining this outside edge. And something that I should have mentioned earlier, when I was assembling these pieces, um, I was looking at the inside edge when I was lining things up because I know that that edge I can't really go in and correct, but this outside edge, if this side is hanging out over more than this side, I can really easily come in with a file and kind of clean that up. So we're going to be working on this outside edge here. And I'm going to start off by actually first using a medium sanding stick, Oop. I'm going to drop my piece first, a medium sanding stick to kind of go along this edge and do a preliminary kind of evening up. And while I'm doing this, I'm kind of holding the piece on either side on the border here to support it while I'm sanding. 
and I'm sanding with my edge. And I'm not gonna be holding it just by the lacy network here because that is really delicate. So support on your border and just kind of go around the edge and even things up a little bit. All right, so things are looking mostly even. So now I'm gonna start off by dampening the areas that are gonna be receiving the paste. It's just a damp brush. And then if you wanna use paste in a brush, you can do that. I'm gonna be working with syringe because I just think it's a little more convenient. And I've got the medium aqua tip on here. And I'm just applying kind of a little bit that I'm gonna be spreading out. So I'm not running like a bead along the entire edge. I'm just kind of distributing it there. And I'm gonna take my brush and kind of press down and drag. Make sure I'm not putting too much of it on these front faces. And that's just to kind of fill in the gaps there in between the two pieces. Um, a clay shaper can be really nice for this kind of work. Once it's kind of placed with the brush, you can come in and again kind of gently push down and work along that edge. So I'm just gonna keep working my way around until this edge is all filled and looking nice. And then I'm gonna take it off to dry on the hot plate again, just to speed things up. So this has dried and I'm ready to kind of take a look at my outside edge. And I find that sometimes I have to go through this process twice just because the syringe does have a slightly higher water content. So it's gonna kind of shrink in as it dries. So I like to start off by taking a super fine sanding pad just because there's a good amount of irregularity in my surface. And again, supporting that edge, give it a kind of gentle sanding to see what we're working with here. And you don't want to remove too much material because then you will kind of go through the syringe that you have added and kind of reveal the gaps and underneath again. So I'm not spending too much time with my super fine. I'm gonna move on to my ultra fine. And so far this side's looking pretty good. And then my micro fine. You just wanna make this edge nice and even and smooth and make sure that you don't have any gaps. So this side's looking really good so far. I'm gonna keep working around the outside edge of my piece until everything is looking nice and smooth. Again, like right here, I'm kind of seeing some low areas. You might have to come in at this point and add some more syringe. But once everything looks nice and even, we'll be ready to move on. So my outside edge is looking really good. And now I'm going to be giving the front and back faces the same kind of attention. So I'll be starting with my super fine for areas where kind of the syringe has come over this edge. And then I'll just make removing it Nice and quick. And then from the super fine to the ultra fine. And then I'll be wrapping these pieces up with micro fine again. And I'm doing these on both the front and back surface just because I think it's really nice to make sure that you give both the front and back face some attention. So I'm gonna keep on refining both these faces and then we'll talk about drilling our holes and firing. So now we're ready to look at drilling holes in these to connect the elements. And this step's kind of optional because there are a lot of holes within the design and opportunities that if you wanted to work with larger jump rings, you know, you could send a jump ring through there to connect it to its neighboring piece. Um, I just think it looks a little bit nicer to have the holes for it to hang from and Again, these are kind of organic shapes, so you can kind of pick, ooh, maybe I want this to be the top, maybe I want this to be the top. Just make sure that you're picking a place that you have enough kind of thickness that you can drill through without kind of punching through a side. So again, I'm working on a tough card. I'm gonna decide I like it this way. And I'm just gonna take my hand drill, kind of eyeball center of this border, and I'm gently drilling through. I kind of like to pick my pieces up to make sure I come through the back. 
can kind of do a back and forth motion there to know that we've gone through nicely. Then just to kind of finish this up, I take the micro fine sanding pad and just run that over where I drilled just to clean up any burrs or bumps that I may have created in that process. All right, so I'm gonna repeat that on the top and repeat that to all of the other elements in your earrings so we can talk about firing. So I like to fire these pieces supported since there is kind of a lip on both sides, there's opportunity for this middle element to kind of slump when it's firing. So I'm gonna be choosing to fire in a silica dish that's filled with alumina hydrate. And I'm choosing that because I was worried about kind of the granules of vermiculite getting into these little element areas and it kind of shrinking to it and the distortion that that could cause. I know a lot of people don't like to fire in alumina hydrate because it is something that you don't want to be inhaling and taking into your lungs. Um, but I kind of feel like with all things that we're working with, you can choose to work with them responsibly. So just like you would use a respirator when you're soldering or wearing safety glasses while you're drilling, I would wear a mask when working with my alumina hydrate. So I'm gonna be firing these elements nestled into the alumina hydrate, just kind of support them. And I'm gonna be firing them for two hours at 1675. So here I have all my earring elements fired. And again, you can kind of see how they're gonna be going together. This top element had one hole at the bottom. I'm gonna be soldering an earring post onto the top there. And then the middle one has a hole both the top and the bottom to join to its neighboring elements. So now that these guys are fired, they're ready to be kind of polished and cleaned up. I really like using these 3M bristle brushes for finishing my pieces. And this one's 400 grit, so it's not gonna be super high polish, but I kind of like the matte finish that it gives. So I'm gonna take my pieces and I'm gonna support them, get this going. And I'm just running it over the surface. And these are great because they can get into the low areas. Um, if I was using like a barrel or sandpaper on a split mandrel, you can't really easily get into the low areas. So you can use these in a back and forth motion. You can kind of use them in a circular. I think back and forth kind of leaves a really nice satiny finish. So that's what I'm working with here. Do my outside edge. Gently buffing through here. If you wanted to really apply a lot of pressure and clean up that area, you could work this on top of a block of wood or something. I'm just kind of gently buffing it so I'm not too worried about getting my fingers back there. And then I'm gonna to come to do the same thing on my outside edge here. And the back. So you'll just work the whole piece until you're happy with this finish. And since I'm using this rotary tool, I am wearing safety glasses and have my hair pulled back. So now we're ready to solder on the back post to this element. And I already spent some time finishing it just quickly um, with the same 3M 400 grit bristle brush, just because I think that metal clay solders a little better when it's finished. It behaves a little bit more like metal and that's kind of what I'm used to. So we're ready to move on and solder the earring post to this. To solder your earring posts onto your pieces, you're going to need an annealing pan, a honeycomb brick, some tweezers, a burnisher, a flex brush, an additional brick, some easy solder, and then your earring posts. You're also gonna need a torch and some flex. Just as a side note, I like to work on these honeycomb bricks when I'm soldering small things. And I like to do so because it's got the little holes that kind of provide ventilation and reduces the amount of reflected heat that you're gonna have. So if you're doing delicate detailed things or if you're just getting started in soldering, it kind of helps slow things down and gives you more control. 
Before I was saying that I like to solder my metal clay pieces when they're finished to kind of behave like metal. And I just mean by that like milled metal or kind of cast metal and not really metal clay. And that is a result of the porosity of metal clay. So I'm kind of kind of look at where my earrings be hanging from and go straight above that. And I'm gonna brace here. Apply some pressure with a burnisher. And again, that's just to kind of minimize any porosity. That way your piece doesn't end up drinking solder. All right. And you can just kind of burnish exactly where it's gonna be, but I like to kind of burnish the surrounding area. That just gives me some flexibility. All right, so now we're gonna be applying some flux and the purpose of flux is just to keep your metal from producing oxides while you're soldering. And that makes sure you have a nice clean seam. So I'm using a brush to apply it to my piece. And then I like to just dip my posts. So I've got my tweezers here, picking it up, kind of scooting it down some, and then Dip it in. For my solder, Cool Tools sells solder that's pre-cut into chips, and that's really convenient. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a couple on my board. And now I've got everything ready to actually execute my soldering job. Before I light up my torch, just to touch base on safety again, my hair is still pulled back and I'm wearing safety glasses, and you should work in a well-ventilated area. So I've got my torch here. I'm gonna flip this up to unlock it, dial up some gas, and we're ready to roll. So solder flows when the two elements that are being joined reach the solder flow temperature at the same time. So I like to pick up the solder on my post itself and then come and heat my piece. I'm kind of looking at that's where it was. This is where I'm going. So I'm heating my piece and just like that, you see it flash. Those pieces are soldered together now. One of the things that I think people, a mistake that I think a lot of beginners make when soldering is they think that I'm soldering this piece to this piece right here. So this is where I'm gonna apply my heat. But this whole piece is gonna kind of act as a heat sink for this joint. So in order for your solder to flow, you need to make sure that this whole piece in your post is the same temperature. Since I applied the solder to this post before joining it with this piece, it was already kind of preheated. It's also much, much smaller than this piece, so I knew that I had to focus my flame on the larger piece. Once your piece is soldered on, you're gonna place it in the pickle. And a pickle is just an acid solution that's gonna dissolve any flux residue and remove any oxides that were formed. So this piece came out of the pickle with kind of a pickle white finish and I wanted to bring it up to match my other elements. So I just hit it with that 3M bristle brush again. To assemble these earrings and wrap this project up, I'm gonna be working with some chain nose pliers, some jump rings, and then some daisy ear nuts. So I'm gonna start off by opening up my jump ring. And to do so, I'm gonna find the break in the jump ring, position my chain nose pliers on one side and then the other, and then you open them by pulling up and down. This keeps them nice and round. So now I'm gonna send one end of the jump ring through my bottom element. That hole's kind of a tight fit. You could go back in and drill that out larger if it ended up being too small. And then I'm going to take my second element and send the jump ring through it. Oh. Some wiggle work. Then I'm gonna grab both ends again 
and close my jump ring. So then I'm gonna repeat that to join my top element with the middle element there. Here are my finished earrings. I really love this project because the finished pieces are really lightweight. I had a lot of fun making them, and I think that you will too. There are plenty of ways that you could customize them to make them your own. I'm thinking it would look really nice if I painted the inside area with black max to kind of add some contrast. Alternately, you could work with other patterns. I was working with interwoven leaves, but Cool Tools sells plenty of other texture tiles that would work with this technique. Again, you're just looking for textures that have a lot of points of connection, and you want to make sure that there aren't floating elements. For this one, there's an occasional little kind of accent piece that floats and isn't connected, but for the most part, I think the web-like nature of it would be really nice. You also want to make sure that you're selecting a texture that has some depth to it. I don't think fine lines would work very well for this technique. These earrings are so much fun to make, and I love how lightweight they are. They're one of my new favorite pairs to wear, and I hope you make some and enjoy them too. Thanks for watching.